and welcome to another week in our garden. It's a beautiful sunny day, the birds are singing and we're down the garden, we're actually in the fruit cage. As you can see we've put the net on. That'll stop the blackbirds from pecking the buds on the currant bushes. There's been one or two in and had a good peck, but this will stop them now. Now there's nothing else really to do in here apart from a little bit of watering. I must water the strawberries. I water them every day in this dry weather so they can get going. Right. Likewise the raspberries will need a drop of water because they're shallow rooted but mainly the fruit bushes will look after themselves. Let's go and also have a look at the brassica tunnels that we've built. Now we're down on the brassica plot which is plot A and we have actually put the covers on now and I've planted the first one with Brussels sprouts. Now these are the Brussels sprouts we planted just 20 plants in the whole of this tunnel and I've put some sticky traps in there just to see what's what's in there now with the net being on no bumblebees etc can get in so the sticky traps are quite safe to use I've also planted up this tunnel with cabbages remember when you're putting brassicas in to plant them very very firm make sure the ground is well hardened down when you're finished now that's all the brassica tunnels now covered and I am actually watering through the mesh most mornings now the thing to remember is with it being so dry for so long and now I'm starting to wet the soil we will get a lot of weed coming up so I will have to go back in at some stage with the hoe and hoe the weeds down. Now this tunnel at the back here I've put the cauliflowers in. Uh, they're before late summer. We don't really want a lot of cauliflowers in this summer so we need a late summer cauliflower. Uh, this is the tunnel that I'm using for the calibrese. It's been prepared properly with deep down manure level and then the top just dug normally and then firmed down. So there's plenty of goodness because these are deep rooted they'll go right down and pick that manure up and feed themselves. I'm only putting three in because we don't need an awful lot of calibrese. This one is that one with the huge edge so we don't want more than what we've got here. I've only put 15 cabbage, calibrese and cauliflowers in each tunnel. Remember the tighter you put the, ca the brassicas together the smaller the plant you'll get so if you want small cabbages you can put them a bit close together. The problem with calibrese and cauliflower is you'll get quite big outer leaves first so they will be look quite crowded in there till the heads start forming then you can fold the tops over. So here we go then there's just three to go in the ground is very very dry on top but when you get when you get down a little bit it's still quite wet and very sticky so it's a case of we just need a bit of rain that will actually break the lumps up on top using the bulb planter again makes life a lot easier just break the bits up and then one here I think to make the three it'll grow round that so we'll go just there break those up a bit there you go before we pop them in we're just going to do a scatter on each hole with some blood fish and bone there you go that's be fine then then while the roots are going down to that 
compost the manure that's deep down it'll give them something to feed on these just fit these holes nicely look and then bring it round and really firm it in it must be firm you have to excuse my shadow it's the we can't really turn the sun back here we are, if you left them like that when you planted them, you'll have that floppiness. So we're going to plant them tight, just hold them firm. So in it goes, and then nice and firm. One more. They've been growing in my own compost with lots of leaf mould in it, so, and they've really rooted down into it, so that's good. In they go. Just push it to the bottom. You actually push the rim of the hole in and it tightens them up nicely. We'll just tidy up a bit before we start. And then we'll get them watered and put the sticky traps in. Very, very dry on top. Now, here's the sticky traps. We'll just peel them off. Now we've got them ready. That bit should have come off, look. There it is. And then, at an angle, what we might have to do is bring them up and tie them to the top when the plants get a bit bigger. We'll have two in each tunnel. You have to be careful you don't catch them on your arm because it takes all the airs off when you take them off. <laughs> so? I'll just get a can of water just to water these in. I've got it ready up at the tank and then we'll cover them up. Right, we'll just water them in. Go round and round them. So it washes that soil down onto those roots. Now, because we're going to cover the tunnel up, what's left in the can we'll put everywhere just to keep it in that lovely moist atmosphere on all the plants that we've planted. It'll also keep them cool as well. Now we do have a little bit of space left in that one and this one is still empty this will be for the red cabbage which is not quite ready for potting up yet as soon as it's another day or so maybe after the weekend we'll get that potted into liners keep them in the cold frame for a day or two so put some root down and then they'll fill up these spaces that we've got left right i'm just going to put the cover on and make it safe because there's pigeons about today no white fly yet it's too early thank goodness and that will keep the plants safe while we can move on and show you the next now this quadrant of plot a i've forked into it barrel loads of all the waste compost i've put about three barrel loads of grit sand in there trying to lighten it up so i can grow some root crops I keep taking the stone out but this is very very stony clay so I keep taking it off I'll get there eventually and I've actually put in now some carrots now I've put in Nantes 2 and Nantes 5 which are the good early carrot now if they do fork that's perfectly all right for us because we're used to it on this land 
also parsnips with many many fingers on but I'll show you where I'm going to put my parsnips next this is where I'm going to put the parsnips the beetroot and uh, a little bit of swede as you can see I've broken the soil down the best I can and got the stones off likewise on the carrot side it's had at least two barrel loads of sand grit sand that is not sand and all the used compost that we've had in the pots and troughs that's all been dug in as well so let's see whether we can grow carrots parsnips etc direct into the ground that's been prepared should be okay but then again we'll still eat them now as you can see i'm painting the frame for the butternuts um one and a half frames still to do it's quite a long job and also these four plots here which is plot B which will be the potato plot this year I took a temperature reading yesterday it's slightly over 10 degrees Celsius in the root zone so that means the potatoes can go in now on Saturday night or Sunday morning sometime over the weekend anyway we're supposedly going to get rain which if if it rains it will help me to get these trenches in because the soil at the moment is just so hard we'll have a job to break it down so if we have a drop of rain we'll come straight down and put those in we will give Diane an umbrella so you can film it now this will be the arch for the sweet peas we're just going to pop it up and then later on we'll get them planted today and then later on I'll put some green wire on these sides just to help the peas get going. <laughs> We've marked out the four sticks where the four legs will go. So I'll just dig the holes for the legs to go in and then I'll come back to you. Right. Nice and level now, we'll just backfill and tidy up now around it Now that's the the arch up for the sweet peas. Now as you can see the ground is far too dry and hard for us to put the sweet peas in and I need some mesh on the sides for the sweet peas to go up and the top on. So we'll leave it at that for now. What I shall do is I shall be watering this for the next 24 hours maybe three or four times it will soften the soil so I can actually break these lumps up and make it more pliable to put the sweet peas in but no good putting them in this they won't take but we need to site the last tunnel what we're going to put the celery plants in we'll do that next now while we're passing we'll just show how the broad beans are doing 
very very well I do water them every day if I can unless it rains now this will be the last of the covered tunnels that we'll put actually going to put the celery in this one perhaps the celeriac as well now somebody's asked me how I hold the tunnels up in the ground as you can see I've got a point on the bottom of the timber and on this side we've got this little noggin put on and if I'm having trouble pushing it into the ground I put my foot on there to give it an extra push but that's literally all that holds the mainframe up is just pushed into the ground now this is what to do with it being as dry as it is whether they'll go in or not I don't know I might have to get nine bar and make a hole but they might go in yes that's going in I'll just square the other one first See then what to do, I put my foot on that nong and I can give it quite a good push in. Although I'm only seven stone, they do push them in. <laughs> Once you get them in, they will hold themselves down quite firmly. The rain etc will really tighten the soil around those bottoms. This lake's not quite straight so it needs to go that way a little. So while they're only halfway in, I can adjust. You see how it's gone straight now. And then push them in. It's only approximate at the moment. We can adjust them a little bit later when we've got the tops on. What I do now for the centre arch is a little technical now so I put that against there and I make a line there and I put it on there and make a line there and that's where I put the arch when I put it in I'll just do the same that side While I'm here, Diane will show you where the floods have washed all my footpaths that were covered in wood chip and washed them all away. And I can't actually get out to replace them yet. As soon as I can, I will. That's gone in nicely. And this one on its mark. And then we'll just have a quick look, make sure it's somewhere like, and then we'll press that one down. And then I put a piece of timber in the top with two screws in, and then I thread some wire along the sides right round so that holds the mesh nicely to go down now that'll be it for this week on a lovely sunny evening really enjoyed doing a bit with you this week now thank you for watching we do appreciate it thank you very much for subscribing and remember please remember stay at home stay safe we want you then in the next few weeks so take care and I'll see you soon. Bye now.